What's up guys? Tim also with Drag Boss Garage. Welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you're here. I appreciate everybody tuning in and enjoying the last video I put up comparing the six cylinder Cleveland head and the high port Cleveland head back here. You just don't see things like that anymore. I don't know how many they made, but it's, it's crazy that time that went into that. And I had talked about the guys that raced those heads, Bruce Sizemore, Sherman Sly, and also Larry McCoy, who I talked to today and messaged him. He wants to do a live chat. A couple things I wanted to clear up. First of all, I put a post with a picture of the, the two cylinder heads, and I said, what doesn't match or can be installed on an engine? And the only person that really commented, one person asked for my email, but I never heard from him. But Sean Burns from Down Under in Australia told me, that, yeah, there's a mouse right here and a skull. So he wins the first Drag Boss Garage stickers. So I'm gonna get them sent to Australia. So I appreciate it, Sean. Now he ports a lot of six owner heads uh, and Barbera heads. So I talked to him about possibly doing a live chat just to kind of get his view on things. He was watching me port the Holly intake manifold, told me a couple things I could try, um, but said I was doing it pretty much correct in regards to I'm just messing with the plenum not making the runners any bigger or the port entrances where it meets the head. So let's talk about today's topic. The reason I'm making this video is because in that last video with the Cleveland six owner head, I mentioned, and here's a picture of it right here, that Darren Morgan told me that that vein can add up to 15 foot pounds of torque. It was put there because that low area of the Cleveland cylinder head has little to no velocity. Less velocity, less power. Simple way to look at it. Now, you've seen these cylinder heads before, but I thought I'd bring these into play so that you can get a better idea of what we're talking about and how to alleviate that issue. Now, he mentioned that if you use a port filler, you can pick up 30 foot-pounds. Now, he didn't tell me what RPM range that was, but if you think about it mathematically, just rough, I mean, that could be anywhere from 22 horsepower, like in whatever, four grand range, depending on what your combination is, you can pick up to 50 horsepower with that thing. But again, everything depends on the combination and, and that might be wishful thinking. I don't know, I've never ran port fillers. Maybe you guys can comment on that and tell me what you think. But I made this video to, to kind of go over the intake and exhaust ports on the Cleveland 4V head. Now here's the intake port, the same one that was on that six cylinder. This head's been transected. I got this from Mike Shreve, who I think got this from Todd Fuchs. But thanks Mike Shreve. I'm gonna be doing a video on his furnace brace Cleveland block that he sent me, hopefully this week. But look at that port. You can put your whole hand in that thing. So it's huge, but all this area is low velocity. You know, the best way to get to the valve is a straight shot, a straight line, line of sight. So the best thing you can do, because the carb sits above it, the carb is sitting above it like this. So the higher and straighter shot you can, the better flow you're gonna have. But obviously the valve cover rail and the roof of the port is a limiting factor. That's why back in the pro stock days, and I had mentioned this and showed pictures, that they actually filled this part in. All this filled in with epoxy. Let me get a better camera angle. All this was filled in with epoxy because they ported right up to that roof rail, right up to here. Those heads that you saw in that video were actually Dino Don's heads, or at least one of the set of heads that he has. So the best way is to get that straight line of sight. Now, with that said, they also had talked about moving the rocker stud, welding this up, and then repositioning it, which changes the valve train geometry. Now, one of the things they also did is put the push rod sleeves in, and I showed you on that other six-cylinder head where they make this a lot bigger, put a sleeve in it to help seal it, but also to get rid of this part of the, the right here, this little bit of a push rod pinch to try to straighten that out. So let me show you something else. Now, when we talked about that cylinder head, the 4V intake port, there it is there. Now you're looking at a cross section here. So look at that thing, it's huge. But like we said, all this area is low velocity. All the velocity is from here, probably from here, almost probably from this line up. So what they did back then is they put that vein in here to try to get the turbulence or the airflow, I should say, to rise and get away from that area and increase the velocity. But what they did make, and I don't know who 
thought of it first, but they made port fillers. Now you can use epoxy. Here's a picture of epoxy one that I had showed previously. And you can fill this floor with epoxy and then shape it to fit the port. Now, Billy Ray Morgan, who's on his world tour now, or I should say his US tour, he hasn't gone worldwide yet, but he sent me a set of these port filler plates that Graham, I think it's Graham or Graham Serini, who made the TFC intake in Australia. He made these port fillers. They're out of aluminum. Much easier to install. Let me show you how that looks. So when you put it in the port, it slides in, effectively raising the floor up, just like that. And Darren Morgan said that's enough for 30 foot-pounds of torque. Now, what RPM range, like I said before, I can't tell you exactly. But hey, every ounce counts is how I say it. But check that out. That's amazing right there. And then you can probably epoxy to the sides. You probably don't even have to. But you put a set screw in the bottom, drill through this part, and then set it into, drill it into this insert. And that's what secures it. You don't want that thing flying down your intake track. Now, let's look at it from a side view. Now, like I said, I got these heads from Mike Shreve, and I think Todd Fuchs had them cut. But look at this. You ain't going to find anything cooler than that. And it also shows you the short turn dramatically right here. When you're porting these heads, you can get a big improvement by working the short turn. Problem is, look how close that water is. You start working this and monkeying around too much, you're going to have cracks, you're going to have water leaks. So <laughs> the roof is where it's at too. Now, here's the port filler. You can't really see it because the other part of the port's gone. But there it is there. And then here's a side view. So it effectively raises that floor, eliminates that dead area of low velocity. And that's how you pick up your torque. So it's pretty cool right there. Now, it's a lot of work to put those in. Even porting an intake is a lot of work. I didn't think about how hard it was until I started doing it, but I think I have at least 10 to 15 hours in that. And someone had, James had already asked me, hey, do you want to port an intake manifold to strip down in it for me? Look, at, I'm no professional. I don't want to do other people's work and then have a problem. And the time that it takes to do it, it's unbelievable. Maybe the second time around I could do it faster, but I, I haven't even finished it and I still got at least 15 hours in it. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you is the exhaust port. Let's take care of the mouse because the Cleveland eats a mouse every time. There you go, Chevy guys. Someone had asked me how, how that port plate bolts in. There's a screw, a set screw here. You can see the holes that are right in here. They drilled through the valve cover rail. So here it is here. We saw that before in the last video, so I don't need to really keep going over that. But what you, what you didn't see though, and a good comparison is the stock port. And I've shown this in other videos, but when you see it, it looks like a pretty good port until you look right here. And I've shown this in other videos that that's just killer. That just kills the flow because it's only really this big. You can see it right there from here to here. This has nothing to do, this is just a big hole. So let's show you a side view of that. So here's an excellent view from the side. It shows you that this area right here is such a waste. It's big from here to here, but the flow is only going from here to here. This has nothing to do with it. Again, is it a dead area? Probably. But you've got pressure pushing out the exhaust. It's not like the intake that has just the atmospheric pressure to push it down. So this actually has the, the, the force of the pressure of the combustion pushing it out. And also you get scavenging effect from that with the intake. So what they did with the high port, they cut this section right off where I outlined it right here. Gone. Now the roof's wide open. So that's the basis behind that. And again, what's right here? Water. So you got to watch out if you're porting your own heads. I got some tunnel ramps here and I was going to talk about them, but I'm already at probably 10 or 12 minutes. So I, I can do another video on that to kind of show you some of the differences. I had made a video before about the pro stock intakes, but I'll just make something a little bit shorter because that was a long time ago. Got a lot of hits on that, guys. So 
just to, to recap, I'll tell you where I'm at. I got a talk with Mike Keener. He had the team checkmate Camaro and modified production and raced like crazy. Huge history. We're going to have a live chat coming up. He's a, he's a great historian. His, his life story just blows me away. The people that he's been associated with, who we met, and the growth of Pro Stock Racing, Modified Eliminator, and all the classes in between. So we'll talk with Mike Keener. I also talked to Frank Iaconio today. Thanks, Frank, for taking my call. He's going to try to do a live chat with me next week. We're trying to figure out his schedule because he's a busy man. But that'll be cool to listen to Frank's story about Pro Stock Racing. All right, guys. That part of the video is over. And if you're still watching this, I'll give you a little tidbit of information. You know, I started that PA channel, the Grumpy PA, a while back. I put up one video, and I haven't really done much with it just because I got so much going on. But, you know, I did cardiac surgery for 13 plus years, and one of the things I wanted to do is open up an aortic valve on camera so you guys can see what it looks like. A lot of guys probably even had valve replacements, but this is a Edwards Life Sciences, just one of the manufacturers of cardiac valves. This is an aortic valve. Carpentier Edwards, Piermont. So it's a bioprosthesis and it's based on pericardium, the sac around the heart of either, there's bovine, which is cow, and there's porcine, which is pig. So they take those pieces of tissue and form a valve and you'll see what it looks like. It's pretty cool. I'll talk about the indications of heart surgery is some basic stuff. Um, being a bioprosthesis, it usually doesn't need anticoagulation in the form of Coumadin, um, Aliquis, Xeralto, if they use those. I, I don't keep track of that. You guys might know since you probably had valve replacement. But you're always going to be on an aspirin if tolerated. This is a model 2800. So it's pretty cool to see that. I like to show you guys stuff you've never seen before and teach you something you didn't know. That's one of my main objectives with this channel and makes it different from other channels. Like I said, this is a friendship channel, a family channel, and a knowledge channel because knowledge is power. With that, you can go anywhere. So I appreciate you guys being here. I'll do more of the pro stock stuff because I know you guys are really into it and that's my forte. And stay tuned to the next episode of Drag Boss Garage.